Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy and today I would like to show you how to work with widgets, how to set up simple shop or stuff like that. You can see here that I have here this weird thing that's moving up and down, that's to show where my shop is, so if I go in there it will slow down time and I have here some stuff to work with. I have set up here just simple function to set lights on, so if I click on that you can set here lights on and then close the shop. You, could, you can also see that I have here mouse, everything is blurry and it works. So close the shop, etc. You can see now that it's light on. Let's go back here, close the shop again. It works as many times as you need. All right, let's get started. You can do this in any project you want. I have just basic template for third person character. So first of all, let's create some blueprint for it. So I will create here a new folder and let's call it shop. So open it and in there we will have to create new blueprint class and it will be actor. And let's call it just shop underscore BP. And first of all, we need, of course, something to trigger that. So I will simply set it up that once player goes through this, it will open the shop. So let's add here simple collision, box collision. Let's leave it just like that. And now I want to show it somehow because let's be real, we all want to have it looking nice. So let's add here scene component and Ideally right here you will have your own uh, mesh or something that looks cool Right here. I will just add here a few cubes so you can copy that or do whatever you want All right, that's how it make sure that it's under that scene component and I will call it just a frame And I will also quickly set up for it some material and it will be probably just something emissive So if you want you can copy that all right It's just super simple three vectors constant that I set to green color and multiplied it by 150 and added it to emissive color I have nothing else to change So now let's put that Okay, let's close that and put that here into all these cubes All right, let's try to put it in the game just to see how it looks not the material this thing and what I want to do is to move this up and down to kind of notify the player Hey, something is here. You should probably pay attention. Not really a bad idea. So to make it move, let's go into event graph, take our event back in play and we will take frame point and set move component two. And what we want is basically move it from this point, which is minus 30 to plus 30. Yeah, something like that. So we will set Z position on the start to 30 because we are starting on minus 30. Let's set it here. And now uh, if you do that, let's set up time. Let's say 0 0.5 should be fine. And now do the same thing to move it back from 30 to minus 30. So it will travel 60 units. Uh, let's connect it here and starts. it starts after event begin play and then it does it again and it will do it forever and ever and ever. You can of course create animation or something like that, that's up to you. So let's move it up and see if it works. And look at that, we have here some object that looks like it could do something. Uh, if I were a player I would go there, not gonna lie. <laughs> Kind of added benefit is that you can see all that reflection in uh, the world. I kind I kind of like it to be honest. So to do, do. Uh, so what I will do now is to of course disable collisions for it. Let's select all these cubes and set our collision preset to no collisions because we want him to go straight to this. And let's make it bigger. Set scale to two times two times two. Yeah, so now we can go right through that. All right, so now let's actually get to creating that shop. So for that, I will right click and create here user interface and widget blueprint. Let's call it shop underscore widget. And what I want to do is to, first of all, let's put here just some random stuff to make sure that it actually happens. So let's put here a button, uh, set anchor point to left side right here and let's put there some text that says something like a button i know it's quite original right here in content text cool let's set it to different color so you can actually properly see it all right so now what i want to do is to edit our shop pp and of course click on our box let's scroll completely down and we have here on component begin overlap and from here we want to cast to our pawn, so that means to our player. In my case it's of course this third person character. 
So let's cast to third person character. Connect it as a director. And from here I want to find some function that I don't have here. So I have to go in my pawn or character. So now in third person character, let's create here custom event. So right click, let's put here custom event and call it create shop. And what I want to do here from the start is to just create widget. That widget will be of course our shop widget. And let's just add it to viewport. Right, and now back in our shop BP, let's take it and create shop. Call function create shop, cool. Let's see if everything works. It should. And here you go. You can see we have here our button, but the thing is that our player can still move. And that's it, player can still move. I don't really like that. So what I will have to do is to kind of lock it. So let's take our third person character. And other thing after creating it is we have to set our control to UI. So let's right click and make sure that you disable context sensitive. And let's find here set uh, UI. And it should be somewhere here. There you go, set input mode UI only. You have UI only and game only. So let's set input mode UI only. Widget to focus, we don't need to care about that, but if you want, you can of course connect this one. Uh, but I don't think that you actually need to care about it. It's only in case that you have several widgets. For example, if you have like a hat for the player and then spawn the shop, you may want to destroy the shop and destroy the hat and then use only shop or etc. etc. It's up to you. You can use in widget to focus then. And the thing why it wasn't seen through uh, with uh, context sensitive, you have to set uh, because it inherits from it's because it inherits from player's controller. So right here you have to take it and get player controller. All right, cool. Let's compile. So now if I go there, you can see that it worked. Well, it worked because our player is still moving, but we can't put any input there. And the other thing is that we can't really show uh, see our mouse, but I can press the button. So that's progress. So first of all, I want to see my mouse. So let's take it step by step. So get this to third person character. And again, right click. I think that you also have to disable context sensitive menu and you have to show mouse set, show mouse cursor, set it to true. And I think that it also inherits from player's controller. Compile and see if it works. All right, now look at that. I have mouse. All right, that's progress. So. The next thing will be, of course, to stop the player. And one thing is that you can pause the game. So set game paused, set it to true, and you should be able to still do everything. Look at that. Game is completely paused and you can do what you need. But that may not necessarily be it, uh, what you are looking for. And I'm not actually sure if buttons work in that case. I think that they do. Let's, let's actually try that. So, so first of all, let's set it that our button actually does something. So let's quickly create for it new blueprint. Uh, actor blueprint do test underscore lamp. And let's create here just some like quick thing. There's like a holder for that thing. <laughs> All right, let's put it right here, somewhere where we will see it. And what I want to do is once I press that button, I want this to turn green. So let's go into land graph, create here a quick function, do, 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 function right here, green light, let's say. And the only thing I will do here is to take our R, Did I? yeah, it's just R. And let's set here material, so set material, do, do, do. We have material index zero and I want to put it to that emissive. Yeah, that will be cool. So once I will call this function right here, green light, it will turn this thing into green light. It will just set emissive material, but let, let's be a bit, a bit poetic. All right, so in shop widget, what I want to do is click on our button. Let's set text to lights on, no, not op, lights on. And let's set the text greenish. So what I will do now is click on that button. And by the way, I won't do it here. But if you want to change this material, uh, this uh, style and text, you have to go in here, put here normal, hovered, and pressed buttons, which corresponds with these events. Which means if uh, event uh, pressed happens, you it will change into this picture, uh, into this picture, etc., etc., and you can design your own 
button switch is what you are probably going to do. But right here, let's just set it to unclicked. And what I want to do here is to uh, first of all cast, so get actor of class. The actor will be my lamp, no, test lamp, and that function will be green light. Alright, let's see if it works. I'm not sure if it will work with a paused game, so let's see. Alright, lights on. Oh, look at that, we turned it green. Congratulations, guys. But that uh, motion blur can be quite weird. So let's try to go there slowly. We probably won't get that much motion blur, but I can still turn the lights on. That's cool. Alright, we have that. We have basic uh, system for shop or for inventory. But the next thing I want to do is to kind of change it. I don't want it to have uh, as a paused game. So what I will do here is a little trick that I like to use. Uh, let's go into to do, do, do our third person character and let's not use set game paused. Let's set here a simple system that will slow down time and then pause everything you need. You actually don't need to pause it probably. And let's get here a timeline. Add here timeline. Let's call it slow down time. Double click on it and create here outflow track. I'll call it time and what I want to do here is in the, oh, let's set it to 0 0.3 that is length of a time add here a key 1 which will be on time 0 value 1 and add another key which will be time 0 0.3 and value let's set 0 I think 0 should be fine and of course select everything right click and switch it to auto it will be a bit smoother and here, oh, of course, don't connect it to play, but play from the start, otherwise it could get kinda messy. And right here, what I will do is on update, I want to set, oh ho ho, set a global time denotation, which is basically time of the game. If it's on one, it's regular game time, if it's on zero, a time is pretty much frozen. And what I want to do is to take it and move it right here before creating shop. Connected to play from the start and after it does all that I want to take finished and connect it into creating that widget. So let's see how that works. So what should happen now is that it will slow down time very slowly and um, not that slowly it's like 0 0.3 seconds but th that's the detail and then it will spawn the shop. So you will have that effect of slowly opening that up. All right, that is a bit of a problem. You can't really set that time to zero. I had to change it. So uh, let's shorten the time to 115 again here and set value uh, to 0 0.1. You can't really set it to zero. I tell you, I figure out that it makes some bugs, that it creates some bugs and the rest of the code doesn't work then because uh, global time basically slows down all the ticks of the game which makes sense that this other, these other things then don't work so you can do that and then pause the game so let's set the game paused and set it to true right here all right play and let's go here and here you go that's much better lights on and we don't have a way how to get out of there so let's do that now we basically just have to reverse the process that we did until now all right so what i will want to do is to go into shop widget and let's add here another button do 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 let's put here text and set it to close the shop i, I call it shop but it's basically any kind of system or hard that you want it to be shop is probably the easiest way to use it for Right, and let's set it on the right side, anchor point right, something like that. And what I will want to do here is uh, again on event clicked. I will probably want to cast. So, so right, let's just create here another function. Uh, just custom event will be probably better, even though it, I don't think it matters in this uh, this time. And let's call it close shop. And what you want to do is to reverse this process. So let's take all these 
Control C, Control N. I actually don't uh, have to. I can't use set input mode UI only. So set uh, input mode game only. Let's switch it here and connect it right here. But before that, we have to of course set our global time dilatation again to one because we want to have a normal time of the game. You can of course use here our slow down or make a reverse part of this and set slow up time. But I don't think it looks that good, honestly. And let's call, call, cast it here. It's a player character, so we will, we would want, what we want to do is to cast to third person character, and we'll have to get player character. This should work. And from here, we will, uh, we will have to take our close shop. Even though that's not quite done yet. All right, but I of course forget you have to also set our game paused to false. You don't want to have your game paused anymore. So let's compile that. Do, do click on play and let's go here. Close the shop and you can see it. It all works just fine. I can still interact with it, which is cool, but not what we are looking for. So to remove the UI, you simply have to take our shop create. You have to, uh, you need to have reference for that widget. So you can either promote this to variable, but if you have it close like that, you can just take it from here and set it to remove from parent, connect. And uh, one more thing, we still will have our mouse because you have to show mouse cursor and disable it as well. As I said, you just have to do reverse of that. I just, like I said it, but they don't do it. Let's ignore that. Click on play. Now I can go here, pause it game. It's still kind of blurry, but there is actually one more thing I wanted to show you to do. So I will do that now. Let's switch lights on and close the shop. Everything seems to be cool. We have our lights. So one last thing I wanted to do is to add here a bit of a blur. So let's find here background blur, put it right here. And what you want to do is to set anchor to this last one and set everything to zeros, which will set it on everything. All right, offset right zero, button zero. And here you have to set blur strength. So you have to test it a bit. So let's try 15. Oh, of course. And you have to set here also the order. So somewhere here should be the order and set it to minus one. All right, click on play. Let's go here. And we have this thing. That's cool. A bit too much blur for my taste, but I will actually leave it for now. And I will just set here super simple animation. So let's take our background blur because I don't want it to show up so fast. So let's add it animation, call it blur up. And we will take our background blur in our blur animation left here. Click on track. Oh, you know what? Let's just do it here. Uh, background blur. Yep. Let's click on this little icon to add keyframe. And on the start, you want to have that keyframe as zero. And on time 0 0.25, let's set it to those 15. So it will blur everything in these 0 0.15 seconds. Uh, so what do you want to do on graph? And we have here event construct and you want to play that animation. So let's click left here on animations. We have here blur up. Let's take it, get it and play animation. And connect event construct. Cool. All right, let's take it to full screen. If ever set, come on, let's take it full screen. My shortcuts are betraying me. Let's take it full screen. Let's go right here. And look at that. It was a bit too fast, but you can of course set up here anime. Uh, you, you can of course set up here animations for this uh, these buttons appearing, etc., etc. So let's close the shop. Try it one more time. Do do. Here we go. Lights on. Close the shop. Everything works fine. All right, let's go there. I would say that that's pretty much what we are. What we were looking for, if they want it, etc. etc. Alright, that's about it. I hope that you learned something. If you did, feel free to let me know in comments or if you have suggestions for other tutorials that you would like to see, hey, let me know. I would love to do that. Not that I'm out of ideas or anything, but I would love to do that, uh, to know that. Uh, well, that's about it. I'm Sir Fancy and see you around. I'm just joking. Sir Fancy out.